With the second week of Advent, we enter more deeply into the spirit of this Advent season. And particularly, it's the words of John the Baptist, that final prophet of the Old Testament, who announces the coming of the Messiah and challenges people to enter into a baptism for the for repentance, to be removed so that their life may be changed. Repentance is probably not a good word, a good translation for what is referred to there in Luke's gospel. It's a change of heart, a change of life. Metanoia is the Greek word and means to turn around and go the other direction. And so we're all called to continual conversion within our life. And that's part of what Advent is, is an opportunity for us to feel to experience more deeply that conversion of our own minds and hearts. What part of my life is really not open to God? What part of my life am I still holding back? Am I still kind of cherishing that evil or that selfishness where I really haven't allowed God into my life? That's what John the Baptist is referring to when he says, you know, the, the roads need to be smoothed out. They need to be made straight again. And sometimes that may only require a shovel, but sometimes it means a bulldozer. That we need radical change within our life, or just that continual growth, that continual openness to God's grace. And certainly part of the message of Advent is that proclamation of forgiveness. What better way to prepare for the coming of our Savior than to experience the Savior's forgiveness within the sacrament of reconciliation. And this is Reconciliation Week for all of us here in Johnson County. Every parish in the county will be offering a penance service this week. Our own is on Thursday evening. But taking that opportunity to come to experience personally that healing, forgiving grace of Christ. And that call to continue to grow in holiness of life. But that's only part of what this Advent is about and even about John the Baptist. He wasn't just about preparing himself for the coming of the Savior, but it was also he prepared other people. He reached out and proclaimed the coming of the Messiah to others. He was truly a prophet, a spokesperson for God, not telling the future, but just revealing God's love in the midst of this world. And so we are called to be like John the Baptist. Probably John the Baptist, to me, is one of the best examples of what we're called to do within our own life, which is not just to experience conversion ourselves, but also to proclaim and to prepare the way of the Lord for coming into our world and into the lives of other people. That truly that is our part of our vocation as well. We are not entrusted with the message of God's love just so that I'll get to heaven, but rather that also we become that sign of God's love to others, that we invite them to know that gift of salvation. And it's not that we can convert anybody. It's not that we are called to be the Messiah. And again, John the Baptist is that wonderful example. He kept saying, no, I'm not the Messiah. I'm not the Messiah. I'm just here to prepare the way. Not a, one of us can ever convert anyone. But all we can do is hopefully prepare the way by showing God's grace, by sharing God's love, and by caring for others in the spirit of Jesus. By the witness of our life, are people truly edified with our life as an individual or as a family? Are people invited to a deeper relationship, a deeper understanding of themselves in their own life because of their contact with us? How do people at work look at me? How do people with whom I interact see me? In what ways am I preparing the way for the Lord to enter into the life of another? And I do say just one other. It's not that we're going to convert the whole world, 
But if we can have that one-to-one, they're using the term these days, the power of the one. The power of the one. Evangelization is really about relationship. And it's about that power of the one, of being open to one other person, to of sharing and caring for someone else, and of sharing our own story of God's love within our lives. And so that's the invitation, that's the challenge that John the Baptist gives us. And it's to invite others into our community with a welcoming spirit. You know, I, I know that some Catholics kind of refrain from inviting their people who are not members of the church to Mass because of the fact that we can't share Eucharist. But there are so many opportunities for us to invite others in to share in our community. Tomorrow night we have, <coughs> excuse me, Lessons and Carols, a beautiful time of spiritual preparation for families, for individuals, a beautiful time to invite a neighbor or a friend to join with us in coming to spend this little time reflecting upon the Word of God and the beauty of God's revelation in, in, composed in music. But whatever it may be, those opportunities to be one-on-one -on -one with others, to remember John the Baptist as that wonderful example for all of us, his own personal conversion of life but also his willingness to be that evangelist, preparing the way for the Lord's grace, preparing the way for God to touch the heart of another because they've experienced the gift of our own love, our own charity, our own caring. What a blessed vocation we have, especially during this Advent season, to experience God's messianic promise ourselves, but to share it with others as well.